Hello, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is the 41st episode of my Modern Warfare 2 Weapon Guides. This time around, we're covering the second to last assault rifle, the much maligned FN F2000. The F2000 is a fully automatic weapon unlocked at level 60. It was designed by FN Style in Belgium and can be thought of as a bigger brother to the similarly styled P90. It was first produced in 2001 and fires the NATO standard 5.56 by 45mm intermediate cartridge. The bullpup layout and compact size make the F2000 a good choice for a special forces role, and has so far seen employment in several such units across the globe. In-game, the F2000 is a low damage assault rifle, on par with the M4A1 and ACR in terms of damage. It boasts the highest fire rate of any of the assault rifles, firing a fearsome 925 rounds per minute. However, its most defining characteristic is the high recoil of the weapon, making staying on target a challenge. Couple the high recoil with the muzzle flash introduced with the high rate of fire, and the reason for the F2000's status as the least popular assault rifle is clear. It's a very difficult weapon to use. The F2000 is one of a few weapons to have its own unique attachment, and it's a custom replacement for the red dot sight. It's based on the F2000's real-life rail scope, and in-game is a little similar to the TAR-21's Mars sight. The frame is quite obstructive, and the sight glass has a darker tint than most, so some don't like it. But in my experience, it works fairly well as a sight, with the elevated position and tint lessening the effect of the muzzle flash. It's also immune to the effects of an EMP. If you'd rather have a conventional alternative though, the holographic sight remains unchanged, and the muzzle flash reducing benefits are similar. Of course, if you want to completely eliminate muzzle flash, then the silencer would be a good choice. You do lose mid-range power, but the ability to better see what you're aiming at does make up for this. Use stopping power to compensate for the damage drop, and you're all set. Using the silencer unlocks the heartbeat sensor. Nothing particularly special about it, although it becomes very useful with lightweight, as the sensor returns to view very quickly after sprinting. And the F2000 isn't half bad with lightweight. The long-range optics aren't worth bothering with on the F2000. At the ranges you can reliably hit your target with the ACOG, you'd be just as well off hip-firing. The thermal is even worse. FMJ is an attachment worth considering. Although the higher damage weapons tend to fare best through cover, the fast rate of fire of the F2000 means you can more liberally spray surfaces, with quite some degree of effectiveness. You do have the muzzle flash to contend with, but by the time you've unlocked FMJ, you'll appreciate that the F2000 isn't a weapon of any sort of precision. The final attachment, Extended Mags, is probably worth considering due to the fire rate and inaccuracy of this weapon. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to unlock it this prestige in time for this video, but one thing i found with the F2000 is that you will have to reload a lot, so the extra 15 rounds could be very useful. Overall, I'd recommend the silencer for those getting used to the recoil of the weapon. The lack of muzzle flash makes it easier to adjust your aim to compensate. Those more familiar with the F2000 might like to run with FMJ, extended mags, or the unique red dot sight, and consider an alternative red pack instead of stopping power. For your blue perk, I recommend Sleight of Hand Pro, for both the faster aim and reload. You will burn through your ammunition quickly, but the reload is pretty slow, so it pays to be more nimble, particularly as you'll need to get closer to your enemy to be effective. Be sure to pick a decent secondary weapon to serve as a backup. Most of the machine pistols will fare better at long range than the F2000. I was using the Glock 18s, as the single machine pistol handles in a similar way to the F2000, with a reasonably quick draw time. You could use a Kimbo for double the firepower. If you have extended mags available for the F2000, 
I'd probably favour scavenger over sleight of hand to permit a more liberal use of the weapon from the hip. For your red perk, you do have a little room to experiment. I'd recommend you start with stopping power, but the fast rate of fire of the F2000 means that once you're used to the weapon, you'll find stopping power doesn't make a definitive difference in most firefights. Lightweight was my alternative perk of choice. As you need to get close with the F2000, the increased mobility might just make the difference. It also helps you to get to cover more quickly if you're outmatched at range. For your third perk, as much of a pain as it was to sacrifice silent footsteps, I have to recommend steady aim. The F2000 is very effective from the hip, and steady aim helps maximize your ability out to a fairly decent range. It would also be the perfect complement to the Akimbo Glock 18s. You can't afford to be too subtle when using the F2000. It really is a spray and pray weapon. If you have the upper hand on a target at some distance, it's wise to fire single shots or bursts to make sure your shots count. But should you find yourself taking fire from a distant foe, you'll be at a massive disadvantage. As with the SMGs, you generally want to try and force engagements at close range, as this is where the F2000 shines. It's not a weapon for those who favour accurate, well-placed shots, and it's far from a competitive weapon. As for all its close-range ability, it remains outmatched by most SMGs and shotguns at close range. Still, if you like a challenge, the F2000 will certainly give you that. And for all its flaws, it's arguably the most effective assault rifle for use in close quarters. Thanks for watching, this has been Xbox Ahoy. Join me next time for the last in this series, and the final weapon unlocked, the AK-47. Until then, farewell.